Let's, uh, let's learn about Nepo babies. Do you know about Nepo babies? You know a Nepo baby is born. Good old Nepo babies. United States we don't have royalty so our substitute for royalty is celebrity. In 2022 the internet uncovered a vast conspiracy. Hollywood was run on an invisible network of family ties and everybody was in on it. Well I think a whole lot of communities are run on invisible networks of family ties. That's the way of the world. Nepos with attitude. <laughs> All right, it is family ties, communal ties, friendship ties, social ties, cultural ties, ethnic ties, racial ties, religious ties. That's what runs the world. That's what runs communities. That's what runs industries. Well, you, you think that uh, this is all just about uh, merit? Come Everyone on, is mate. someone's kid, but it was as if everybody were somebody's kid. Euphoria, the buzziest show on television, was created by the son of a major director and co-starred the daughter of another. Actress Maya Hawke was not only born to two famous parents, but looked like them too. Okay, so if you have parents who are rabbis, you're more likely to become a rabbi. If you have parents who are professional musicians, you're more likely to become a musician. If you have parents who are writers, you're much more likely than average to become a writer. If you have parents who are university professors, you're much more likely to become a university professor than average. Right? This isn't something that's uh, unique to Hollywood, it's just that Hollywood is the industry that probably more people want to get into, right? Compared to the number of people who want to get in versus the number of jobs that are available, right? Hollywood probably has the highest ratio. It's like the UCLA of industries. Like, it seems like everyone wants to get into UCLA but there are only certain limited spots. So I think UCLA gets more applicants than any other major university in the United States. Certainly some years that's true. Half of Brooklyn's indie artists had dads with IMDB pages. Even Succession's cousin Greg turned out to be the son of one of the guys who designed the Rolling Stones Lips logo. Aghast, content creators got to work. An unwieldy phrase, the child of a celebrity, reduced to a catchy buzzword nepo baby okay so resentment <laughs> resentment that the world is unfair very easy emotion to tap into uh, doesn't really get you anywhere like i'm all for embracing reality and reality is that familial ties racial ties religious ties ethnic ties professional ties educational ties shape the world TikTokers produced multi-part series about Nepo babies who resembled their famous parents. Exposés on people you didn't know were Nepo babies. Everyone knew. And PSAs urging celebrity parents to roast their Nepo babies to keep them humble. Like psoriasis, the label was something you were born with. And those who had it found it equally irritating. Maud Apatow, daughter of Judd Apatow and Leslie Mann, told Porter Magazine the term made her sad. It filled Zoe Kravitz, daughter of Lenny Kravitz and Lisa Bonet, with deep insecurity. You don't want to unnecessarily increase other people's resentment of you. So if you have advantages, if you have successes, right, it's uh, good to be humble and nice and approachable. And so I work background in many Hollywood movies and TV shows and uh, most working actors, even celebrities, are pretty nice people. They're very easy to get along with. There's kind of an ethos in Hollywood to you know, get along with everyone because you never know the, the assistant that you work with today you know, may be your producer or director tomorrow. So in general, Hollywood's incredibly open to outsiders. It's incredibly nice, right? People are rarely needlessly nasty. Right? It's probably the, the nas nicest industry of which I'm aware because you're strongly incentivized to be nice. So you never know when someone may have power over you. 
So if you are nice to people, right, if you're open to people, if you're generous with people, if you're not a jerk, then uh, people are going to be much less likely to resent you. There are things you can do to reduce the odds of being sued. There are things you can do to increase the odds of being liked. Things that you can do to increase the odds of connecting with other people. Right? There are things you can do to reduce the likelihood of other people intensely hating you. Gwyneth Paltrow, daughter of Blythe Danner and Bruce Paltrow, commiserated about it with Haley Bieber, daughter of Stephen Baldwin and niece of Alec, on the latter's YouTube channel. People are ready to pull you down and say you don't belong there. Scratching the itch could only make it worse. At 16, the model and actress Lil... Okay, it's not a good idea to complain publicly about people calling you a Nepo baby, or if you have any success, all right, then uh, not a good idea to complain publicly about the, the price of the success, because right? that just incentivizes people to resent you. Rose Depp landed her first campaign with Chanel, the same house her mother, Vanessa Paradis, worked with. The year before, she'd made her film debut alongside her father, Johnny Depp. In a November L profile, she brushed off suggestions that her path had been cleared for her. It just doesn't make any sense. The response was swift. On TikTok, floating heads begged Depp to shut up and stop being delusional. Her fellow models cascaded her on Instagram. I have many Nepo baby friends whom I respect, the top model Vittoria Ciretti wrote in an Instagram story. But I can't stand listening to you compare yourself to me. I was not born on a comfy, sexy pillow with a view. The okay, so good idea to go through life with an attitude of gratitude. And be grateful for all the advantages that you received. Now, people will find you much easier to deal with if you are happy and grateful. Right? You tend to be much more integrated into reality when you're grateful. You tend to make much better decisions. You tend to get along much better with other people. And when you have an attitude of gratitude, you cannot carry resentment, right? Once you feel grateful, you can't feel resentful. 40 running from Hagen in the desert. Okay. Uh, so if you are feeling angry and resentful, you cannot simultaneously feel grateful. If you feel grateful, you're just in a place where you're going to get along with people. You're going to be much more effective. Right? You're going to discern reality much more clearly. Right? Life is going to work better. Other people will enjoy your company more and you will feel better at yourself. The intensity of the backlash may suggest we live in a world where bands of sans culottes are roaming Pacific Palisades, rounding up anyone whose parents' names are blue on Wikipedia. In truth, Nepo babies have always been a fact of Hollywood. Today, they're not only abundant, they're thriving. Nepo babies aren't just a fact of Hollywood. Nepo babies are a fact of life. Right? If you have parents who are athletic, you are much more likely to be athletic. If you have parents who are charming, you are much more likely to be charming. If you have parents who are good looking, you are much more likely to be good looking. If you have parents who have high verbal IQs, you are much more likely than the average to have a high verbal IQ. Look, I can limit my Hagen to after work and I have... Oh, Daniel Goldhagen. Uh, I, I don't think that... Uh, imbibing Daniel Goldhagen is going to, you know, hurt you socially, right? It, <laughs> it's not like uh, consuming distant material. So you have my blessing to consume Daniel, Hol uh, Daniel Goldhagen, you know, any day, any time. Glib Medley says, I avoid ice cream. Oh, if only I'd follow Glib Medley's advice. On all my long walks, I've been indulging in ice cream. And so despite my abundant exercise, I am the same weight, 170 pounds is when I arrived here. But at least for the past eight days in uh, Tenham Sands, I have had no ice cream. In an industry built on reboots, a famous last name can be valuable intellectual property. A celebrity child brings an easy marketing hook, as well as millions of TikTok followers who, the theory goes, will slide seamlessly from watching their wardrobe reveals to watching their war drama reels. Ang Lee tapped his son, Mason, for the starring role in it. So I had someone constantly offer me bread. And I kept, uh, and the more the bread was offered to me, like the less interested I was in eating bread. Uh, so 
uh, right, many of my friends, you know, come from Seventh Day Adventist background. They're all into Seventh Day Adventist health reform, and uh, they kind of, you know, wonder what the hell happened to me. I've been drinking Diet Orange Fanta while I'm in, in Tenham Sands. But here's where I'm machmir. Here's where I'm. Here's where I'm strict. I, I try to get plenty of protein and fat with every meal. So I, I don't like to eat meals that are 60, 70, 80 percent carbs. I, I try to go for like a, an even amount of my calories coming from fat, from, from carbs, and uh, from protein. So, and I'd rather eat an ice cream with lots of fat in it than, say, a, a popsicle that has, you know, almost no fat in it. It's Bruce Lee biopic. And 2021 saw two sons of actors, Michael Gandolfini and Cooper Hoffman. Those aren't meals if they're 70% carbs. It's terrible, but that's the diet I was raised with. It's an insane diet, but uh, when I was growing up in Seventh-day Adventist world, there are quite a few of the most zealous health reformers who thought that an 80-10-10 diet was the healthiest one. 80% carbs, 10% fat, 10% protein. It's stupid. So why persist in the folly? I don't. I just made the point that I do not. I avoid that high carbohydrate diet. Now, other people may persist in it because they think it's healthy. They think it's the right thing to do. All right? And uh, who am I to try to talk them out of it? There's no point. No point trying to argue with people. So I got suckered into giving a new year resolution of, oh, I want to drop 10 pounds. And then the bloke says, oh, do you want to learn how to do it? I said, no. He says, do you want my advice? I said, no. But he gave it to me anyway. I said very distinctly, I don't want your advice. But uh, he gave me, you know, his complicated theory on uh, how to lose weight. No, thank you. Not sharing any more resolutions with you. It's amazing how people can be very nice and uh, very you know, seemingly well suited to you. But then they start piling on the unsolicited advice. And uh, I don't know, I just don't appreciate it. It, it kind of reminds me of my father. Their dearly departed father's footsteps. Streaming series such as Stranger Things, Never Have I Ever, and The Sex Lives of College Girls may well be federally funded and make... Ah, so Half Galician is uh, reintroducing healthy amounts of butter. Remember when butter was really bad, or saturated fats really bad? I mean, health advice is just constantly changing. Butterphobia killed this country. I rem but remember school? It seems like there's a new educational fad every year. Like I grew up in Seventh-day Adventist schooling that uh, thought competition was just like of the devil. You know, strongly discouraged competition. You know, as a result, I lost a lot of my incentive to, uh, you know, to, to compete in school. French have butter, they're full fat cream, they don't overindulge, the fat tells the brain you've had enough. Absolutely. This crazy war that we've had on, on saturated fat and butter. Work projects for well-connected private school graduates. This year, small films such as I Am Ruth and Sam and Kate seemingly exist solely to pair... Yeah, Half Kalishan says I can't eat more than a single serving of haagen -Dazs. But, uh, you know, frozen yogurt, you can order a large and still want another one. Strip out the fat, pump in the sugar, no safety signal to the brain that you fall. I agree. Famous actors with their less famous offspring, Kate Winslet and Mia Threepleton in the former, Dustin Hoffman, Jake Hoffman, Sissy Spacek, and Skylar Fisk in the latter. And that's just the working actors. Elsewhere, the celebrity media complex allows Brooklyn Beckham, son of David and Victoria Beckham, to headline Variety's Young Hollywood issue without ever approaching anything you or I would recognize as a normal job. Nepo baby. How could two little words cause so much conflict? A baby is a bundle of joy. A Nepo baby is physical proof that meritocracy is a lie. No, it's not physical proof that meritocracy is a lie. It's physical proof that meritocracy is not the only explanation for how the world works. Meritocracy is part of the explanation for how the world works. Connections are just another part for how the world works. It's like America is a democracy. Yes, America has democratic elements. It also has dictatorial elements. It also has oligarchic elements. 
Uh, people just want these simple either or solutions, either, you know, it's, it's a meritocracy or the whole thing is fixed. And uh, we need to develop more sophisticated top-down models as well as more sophisticated bottom-up models for how we work. We love them, we hate them, we disrespect them, we're obsessed with them. In a single tweet in... Oh, did you know that we're obsessed with Nepo babies? I think only a tiny sliver of uh, population is obsessed with Nepo babies. I'd never heard the term before, but I've been doing hard yakka, all right? That's an Aboriginal word for hard work. And if there's any group that knows about hard work, it's Aboriginals. The Australian indigenous people are just famous for their work ethic. They're just famous for, you know, working hard, for their dedication, their conscientiousness with, with regard to work. So I've been putting in hard yakka at uh, the garden center, you know, hauling around fertilizer bags in the, you know, the hot 80 degree sun and uh, listening to my Apple News Plus pieces. And this is one I found from New York Magazine, Napo Babies. And I, I thought this is important because it, it sheds light on, you know, wider issues that uh, genetics matter and environment matters. Yeah, I got my current job at the garden center via nepotism. <laughs> and I've got a free place to stay here in Tenham Sands due to nepotism. And I had a free place to stay in Sydney due to nepotism. And 40 needs cam stabilization. Okay, you want me to just leave it here? And uh, I got, you know, invited back to the rabbi's house for ethnic stabilization. The pixel count is really low. Yes, I'm using my cheap Aussie phone, my low quality Aussie phone, because I got a lot of cheap data on it. But I also recorded on my DJI Cam 2 some uh, shorter videos with very high quality picture. But uh, I decided to do a live stream with this low quality phone because I get the interaction. Yeah, when I think 40, I think 8K. Well, I did some 1080K recording videos that I'll upload later on. And you'll get to see the same picture, but in 1080 quality. February, a Canadian tech support worker named Miriam Duraji brought the idea of Nepo babies into the public conversation. The 25-year-old was born in Montreal, but when she was nine, she and her family moved to Algeria. Right, we should just take it for granted that athletic parents are going to be more likely to be athletic. No, I did not see the Jets lose. I, I was watching the Cowboys game. I thought they had it wrapped up on Monday morning my time. I thought, there's no way they can lose. And uh, they lost. What a heartbreaking loss. I uh, haven't watched any other uh, NFL live. And uh, the test cricket match wrapped up over the weekend. But anyway, I love this story because obviously athletic ability is heavily genetic. Musical ability is heavily genetic. Cognitive ability is heavily genetic. Criminal ability is heavily genetic. You know, criminal parents are more likely to have criminal kids. So genetics doesn't account for everything, but it is a, a powerful window into the world. Where her parents have been born. She spent three years there with no internet, cut off from pop culture. When she returned to Canada as a tween, plugging back in was like taking a starving man to a cheesecake factory. In 2013, she joined Twitter and enlisted on the side of the Barb's, Nicki Minaj's obsessive, protective Stan army. So, it's a lot easier to hang out in Outback Australia. Ford, Ford needs to give the De Niro lines from Casino, which... Oh, lots of holes in the desert. Okay. Uh, but anyway, it's a lot easier to hang out in rural, remote Outback Australia when you have high-speed internet. Uh, you still feel connected to the wider world. So I remember I lived out here for a year after high school. And, uh, and yeah, it felt much more remote then. There were only two TV channels. There was the commercial channel, Channel 7, and then there was the ABC, the, the government channel. 
and there are about uh, four radio stations except at night you could pick up about another 10 radio stations but uh, I'd have to you know, scan through the the Australian national newspaper to find the NFL results but uh, yeah the, the way the world seemed much more remote back then but now we've got high-speed internet even here in Tenham Sands and I'm able to keep up with my Wall Street Journal subscription and Thinking of adding a Financial Times subscription, like it costs $40 a month, and there seems to be a lot of great material in it. So I'm already spending about $150 a month on news subscriptions. So that's like $150 a month, that would pay for a typical Tenham Sand household's water bill for I think three months or six months. But what I pay monthly for news subscriptions. There she learned how to speak fluent internet, crafting tweets that would push people's buttons. The stir over Hollywood nepotism had been... Yeah, that's how you get traction in social media. You push people's buttons. You provoke people. The more intense the emotional reaction you receive from people, the more likely your contributions are to go viral. Done to percolate at the start of the pandemic, which both supercharged the backlash against celebrities and heightened the salience of their dynastic ties. Since me. So there's only one Jew. You are good at provoking reactions from people. So there's only one Jew I know of in Tenham Sands and Boyne Island, and they don't want to be known as Jewish. They like they flee from me. <laughs> right? So I'm about to head into a Sabbath with uh, no synagogue around for, you know, 450 miles. So the one Jew in town does not want to be known as Jewish. So it's a bit of a shock when uh, the locals see you know, some bloke ambling around wearing a yarmulke and his seat seat out. Famous families were quarantining together. Even the most exalted stars felt a little bit D-list, right? I was kind of hurt when I went back to Australia in 2014 for three and a half weeks and then returned to Shul and people said, oh, you know, I would have thought you'd just given everything up. Mate, just because I go to Aussie, just go, go to Outback, all right, doesn't mean I'm just going to give everything up and I don't fall apart just because there's no Shul around. But uh, yeah, Shabbos alone sucks, all right, yeah, definitely like plugging into the Jewish community. I really like being around Jews. I, I don't like to go a week without Jews. But I'm going to go three weeks without Jews, then I'm going to plug back in in Sydney in uh, two weeks. For the plucking. It didn't take much to set off a round of discourse. A Deadline article about a short film called The Right Way directed by Steven Spielberg's daughter, starring Sean Penn's son, and written by Stephen King's son. Have you uh, seen the new Steven Spielberg movie, The, the Fair Woman's? Uh, Steve Saylor says it's a pretty boring movie about uh, Steven Spielberg's incredibly privileged, non-dramatic childhood. That's why we read Torah on Monday and Thursday. You can't go three days without hearing Torah spurred days of online controversy. As Daraji caught up with the conversation, a lot of things started to make sense. She often passed time watching catwalk videos. You would see models walk super well, and then there's Kendall Jenner walking, and you're like, oh my gosh, it's really bad. She says, how bad? She walks like a normal person. Like many Zoomers, Daraji watched Euphoria and absorbed everything about it online. She wasn't a particular fan of Maude Apatow's character. Her acting wasn't bad, but it wasn't anything special. And when she discovered both of the actress's parents... Yeah, I don't like being instructed unless I'm in the mood for being instructed. It's like, I don't like being arrested unless I'm in the mood to be arrested. It's just something about being instructed without solicitation reminds me of my father had Wikipedia entries of their own, she fired off a tweet. Wait, I just found out that the actress that plays Lexi is a nepotism baby. OMG, her mom is Leslie Mann and her dad is a movie director, LOL. Her tweet received more than 4,000 likes, 
but the more important figure was the 2,500 plus quote tweets, mostly from millennials and Gen Xers and crutch. I've only lived with a woman once uh, for about uh, four months in Orlando, Florida when I was 27. But you really get to learn something about yourself when you're, when you're living with a woman. And uh, she noticed that my, my chest would flush red whenever I thought I was being talked down to. When you remind Luke of his father, he does things like convert to Judaism. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, when people talk to me like I'm stupid, or when people instruct me without that being their appropriate role, without me soliciting it, uh, does not bring the best out of me. But at least I don't I like to think I don't have the, the super strong negative reactions to this that I used to have for anyone who reminded me of my father. Now I've, I've moderated, I've, um, you know, I've, uh, I've become more tender and gentle. I used to just have you know, really strong reactions to anyone who reminded me of my father. Now I just have a somewhat strong reaction to people when they remind me of my father. Oh, so I'm spending so much time around family that I just had to get away. I, I'm used to spending vast quantities of, of my day on my own. You remind me of my father. I hate my father. So now I just had to get away. Just uh, get out here all alone on the beach, right? I can't see some, anyone for miles. I need my alone time. Just me and my phones and my five loyal viewers. Wish that someone had gotten to Judd Apatow through Maud Apatow. Prompted by the hubbub, major publications wrote explainers on the subject of Nebo babies. And soon, no celebrity child could do press without getting grilled on their parentage. To Daraji's critics, few of whom were aware that she had been a child living in North Africa during Apatow's heyday, she was emblematic of Gen Z. Hey, I'm just curious, when, uh, when a bloke invites you over for coffee, so that you can see his etchings, uh, do you go for that? Because the last time I went for that, I ended up with a sore backside. So when uh, some bloke says, oh, come over, you know, I'll give you coffee and you can look at my paintings. Uh, does, that, does that fill you with joy? Or does that fill you with foreboding? I mean, where do you stand on, you know, blokes inviting you over for coffee and etchings? Yeah, do not go over to that bloke's house. 10 inch etchings, God forbid, God forbid. But, you know, he says he's got lovely etchings and I don't really drink coffee, but he'd pr probably provide me with tea. I, I'm just not really sure I'm in, in the mood for a lot of etchings right now. Naivete. In turn, the anger her tweet stirred up was partly attributable to older generations' discomfort with their own cultural irrelevance. The pot stirrer in her couldn't help but be... So the great news is I'm still attractive to 60-year-old women. Uh, the bad news is I don't seem to still uh, be pulling in the, the under 40 women. Drink the etchings tea and wake up three hours later violated, God forbid, and uh, missing a kidney. That, that's what I'm concerned about. A little proud. If you called out a Nepo baby online, they might be forced to respond. Whatever you say could get the attention of those nepotism kids. Yeah, only if you do it on Twitter, right? Twitter is the most... Uh, direct way to interact with people way above you in social status. Everett says, I'm happy to report I'm attracted to girls my own age, which is millennial women. Okay, so millennial means, uh, what, born in the 1970s? It's get a reaction out of them, she says. You can trace the origins of the modern backlash to two pivotal events. First, the Girls' Wars of 2012, in which nepotism allegations became tangled up in discourses around race, misogyny, and privilege. Discourses. My God, when... Uh, 1980s, okay. 1980s is... Uh, and uh, very early 90s. Those are the... Those are the, the, the millennials. And whenever I start hearing about discourses, oh, I get nervous. Man, sitting, sitting in the sand and my bum. Oi, oi, my bum. I, I, I didn't bring my 
super sophisticated. Uh, whatever it is, thingamajig. But uh, my algo gave me some rando video of you and Neil Strauss from 2007. Yeah, I remember that. Good on Neil Strauss. He, uh, he was thinking of, uh, he told me he was thinking of uh, calling me out to work on a, a, a book together. But uh, Neil was an absolute delight to talk to. Questions like, aren't they actually satirizing people with zero black friends? Second, the Operation Varsity Blues scandal of 2019, which revealed the underhanded methods by which celebrities like Lori Loughlin and Felicity Huffman sought to get their children into high ranking universities. By exposing the inner workings of the process in humiliating detail. Oh, really shocking that people would go to great lengths to try to help their children get ahead. Was I in the poor community? No, but uh, I I went to Neil Strauss talks, or I I covered some edges of the uh, pickup artist community when I was writing a, a daily blog on the sex industry. Now Neil Strauss's book on relationships, I think. So the game was about pickup, but uh, then then he did a follow up about uh, five years ago on relationships talked about going to rehab for sex addiction. That was a powerful book. Down to staged photos of the applicants posing on rowing machines. It stripped them of their mystique. Nepotism became funny. Nobody exemplified this better than Lachlan's daughter, Olivia J. Giannulli, a YouTube personality seemingly uninterested in the expensive education her mother had risked prison to help her obtain. One of the earliest instances of nepotism baby being shortened to Nepo baby appears in a 2020 post from the blog Pop Culture Died in 2009, which describes Olivia Jade as our era's answer to bling ring icon Alexis Haynes. While Haynes embodied the aughts on a site. So, what are the best ways to spend Shabbos in Tenem Sands? I do have a sex addiction, says Everett. Well, you may want to check out one of a dozen different 12 uh, step uh, sex addiction. Programs 40 is enacting the footprints poem on every greeting card. Scopolamine is what women put in male travelers' drinks in Brazil. You generally wake up with your credit cards missing, maybe your kidney. Oi, dangerous world out there. So, facing 25 hours of Shabbat without, without Jews. So, definitely spend it with family, definitely spend it on uh, long long walks by the beach, definitely spend it reading books, maybe a little napping, maybe some dovening. The hybrid of sleaze and lux, Olivia Jade exposed the lie at the heart of relatable social media fame. The stars pretending to be just like you and me, whilst shacked in a palace in Beverly. Whoa! So you mean that, uh, Stars and public personalities who pretend to be just like you and me aren't really like you and me? You mean that actors act? You mean that uh, social media stars are performing? You mean that what I'm doing right now is just not a casual conversation with blokes, but there's an element of performance here? Y you mean to say that uh, who I am off camera is uh, somewhat different than who I am on camera? Shocking. Bills. It makes sense that Zoomers, a generation steeped in pop analyses of structural oppression, would hit on the Nepo baby as their particular celebrity obsession. Though, as anyone who followed the journeys of mansplain and gaslight could tell you, a word that goes viral can shed its nuances. Hollywood is built on minute gradations of status, which the online conversation has a tendency to elide. At times, it seems any young star whose parents did anything more interesting. I don't know why anyone wouldn't be fascinated by status. Like, status is probably the most important thing in people's lives that people are most reluctant to talk about. Right, status is probably the most powerful force driving people that they are the most reluctant to talk about. People would rather talk about their sex lives, their bank accounts, like all sorts of private and personal things, but to admit to how much they want status, to how humiliating it is to lose status, 
I think people are probably more reluctant to admit this basic force of life, this basic fact of life, this, you know, driving power in life. I think people are probably more reluctant to admit the role that status plays than any other single thing. What am I missing? Where else are people, you know, incredibly driven by some powerful force that they are highly reluctant to disclose? I mean, Tom Wolfe made the search for status like the, the underlying through line of almost all his work. Right? He, he said uh, there are four components of compelling writing, uh, multiple points of view, detailed scene-by-scene -scene construction, uh, liberal use of realistic dialogue, and pay close attention to status details. So no, I don't think the status is just something that some people are interested in. I think everyone is, but we want status in different areas. So, you know, the religious leader wants status for his you know, great religiosity, and then his neighbor wants status for being, you know, a great car mechanic, and then their neighbor wants status for, you know, their accomplishments in fishing. Right, we want status in different areas, but uh, we all want to avoid humiliation, which is a loss of status. So how's your status striving and humiliation avoiding going these days? Listening to an article in New York Magazine here on uh, Nepo babies. Bloody heck. These include figures like Lena Dunham, whose artist parents supplied the necessary cultural capital, as well as industry babies like Billie Eilish, daughter of a voice actress, and Kristen Stewart, whose mother was the script supervisor on The Flintstones and Viva Rock Vegas. The Hadid sisters are a tricky case. As with that other famous Palestinian Jesus Christ, the benefits of the filial relationship clearly flow both ways. And we can probably draw a line when it comes to figures like Paris Hilton, for whom the term rich people is already sufficient. The Nepo baby's path to stardom begins when they're a literal baby. A celebrity child takes center stage in a series of highly visible tabloids. So even the uh, Nepo babies, right, they suffer pain and humiliation, right? Nobody has it easy. Right? People will have it easier than us, but once you get to know their life better, you, you, you recognize they also have all sorts of pain that we don't have. Rituals. We're expecting photos, birthday parties, holidays. As they age into adolescence, the mere fact that they physically resemble their famous parents is a news event on par with a closely fought primary. In the past, it's a news event for some, right? Other people don't really care. I've never thought about Nepo babies. I've never resented Nepo babies. Just uh, hasn't come up for me. I find the story interesting because it sheds lights on wider issues, how important genetics are and how important acculturation environment you know, imprinting is. And uh, the world is run on these invisible ties of family, race, religion, ethnicity, school. Five years, People.com has written no fewer than 17 articles about how Ava Philippi looks like her mother, Reese Witherspoon. Well, why does People Magazine do this? Because there's an enormous audience for this. People are naturally interested in the lives of royalty and America's royalty are celebrities. Schadenfreude in the realization that far more than most of us, a Nepo baby's destiny is determined by a spin on the genetic roulette wheel. The model Kaya Gerber has. All of us have lives determined by a spin on the genetic wheel, right? We are all you know, the product of our genes and our environment. There's a tremendous element of chance there. Profited handsomely from looking exactly like her mother, Cindy Crawford, while Bruce Willis and Demi Moore's daughters were undoubtedly hampered by inheriting their father's most famous feature, his chin. Once children receive their own Instagram handles, they become tabloid protagonists in their own right. 
from seven reasons to follow Reese Witherspoon's daughter on Insta. Number two, she takes perfect selfies with mom, Reese. Gwyneth Paltrow's daughter, Apple, went from an object, most notable for her unusual name, to a subject by issuing sassy clapbacks on her mother's posts. Kate Beckinsale's daughter, Lily Mo Sheen, made headlines for posting selfies with her boyfriend, who fans thought resembled her father, Michael Sheen. But if they want to stick around into adulthood, an ambitious Nepo baby must soon justify their place in the Hollywood firmament. How can they begin to prove themselves? Traditionally, mom and dad. Yeah, so nepotism will usually get you a step in the door, right? But uh, in the end, it's gonna be up to you. Sink or swim on your own merits. Without doubt. Apatow is the latest in a long line of directors' children who got big breaks in their parents' projects. One that stretches at least as far back as 1969 when a teenage Angelica Houston made her debut in her father's film, A Walk with Love and Death. The disgraced screenwriter Max Landis got his first credit alongside his father on an episode of Masters of Horror. Jake Kasdan co-wrote the behind-the-scenes book for his father's film, Wyatt Earp. Hulk was one of many actresses who auditioned for a small part in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but she was the only one who self-tape co-starred Ethan Hawke. Yeah, just because you get a uh, step in the door, that doesn't mean you're going to stay around. Right? We all have uh, advantages and disadvantages, but uh, in the end, you know, if uh, you're unpleasant or incapable, you know, if you're a jerk, around all right you're probably not going to last very long okay hopefully the only one who received an extra tight hug and a wink from quentin after her callback when witherspoon told her friend mindy kaling that her son deacon Philippi was interested in acting kaling cast him as a prep school cutie in two episodes of never have i ever in which he did an impressive job of not staring directly into the camera He's obviously so talented, and he's great looking, and we just thought he would be great. Wow, so just imagine that. Uh, celebrities' children tend to be better looking than the average. I never have thought that. Killing told Variety. In a rough study, approximately 100% of celebrities' children were hailed by their collaborators as talented, humble, and ready to put in the work. Noah Baumbach recalled going through audition after audition and all the callbacks to find actors who would play Adam Driver's children in white noise, only to land upon these two Nivola kids, Sam and May, whose parents are Emily Mortimer and Alessandro Nivola. Yeah, so if you grow up in, in Hollywood, if you're familiar with the norms of Hollywood, if you speak you know, the lingo of Hollywood, yeah, it'd probably be more pleasant and easier to have around. They were just so wonderful. Donald Glover praised Malia Obama's work ethic in the writer's room for his upcoming Amazon series, telling Vanity Fair, her writing style is great. Such quotes often appear in the Nebo Baby's traditional coming out party, a profile in a glossy magazine. The Nivolas recently got one in The New Yorker. The hottest trend in media right now is the intergenerational team up which GQ has made a specialty, running spreads of John C. Riley posing with his model musician son, Love Leo, and Pierce Brosnan alongside his model musician filmmaker sons, Dylan and Paris. Like Obama, a few brave Nebo babies step outside their parents' chosen field. The bravest don't try to become famous at all. Bruce Springsteen's son is a firefighter, while Willem Dafoe's is a law clerk. Cassie David made her name through funny Instagram captions, which prompted 2017-era headlines like, I wish I was Larry David's cool daughter, and landed her a book deal. Gordon Ramsay's daughter, Holly, started a podcast about young people's mental health, which helped get her signed to CAA. Presumably, the 300,000-plus TikTok followers didn't hurt either. Sometimes capturing the internet's attention for a moment is enough. After Kamala Harris's stepdaughter, Ella Emhoff, showed up at the inauguration looking like a goth Margot Tenenbaum, she landed a modeling deal, which led to her walking New York Fashion Week and being named an icon by Harper's Bazaar. For those not ready to commit to one... And in the end, there you are. You still have to face life on your own. Right? You still have to look at yourself in the mirror. 
still have to stand on your own two feet. Still have to you know, provide a reason for people to want you around. Profession, the industry can provide a buffet of opportunities. In August 2020, Isadora Doa, the daughter of Barney, the then 17-year-old daughter of Bjork and Matthew Barney, was cast alongside her mother in Robert Eggers' The Northman. On a plausible basis that the role called for a specific type of medieval Norse singing that only someone related to Bjork could pull off. So I've had a lot of advantages being uh, Desmond Ford's son, right? A lot of uh, doors opened up for me, like a lot of kindness was shown to me, a lot of opportunities were given to me uh, due to being Des Ford's son. And uh, being Des Ford's son also came with some some prices that uh, you know anything I say or do is much more likely to get back to my father. There was like a different level of behavior that was expected from me. Now, overall, you know, being Desmond Ford's son, you know, was a pretty nice thing. So I've uh, certainly enjoyed nepotism, having good relations with my brother and sister and stepmother and relations, you know, relatives who you know host me. So, I've taken advantage of nepotism as far as it will take me. In February, Doa received her first magazine profile in the British quarterly, The Face. I remember when my father was on trial at uh, Glacier View in 1980, as uh, one leading member of the church. Luke is going for the Crocodile Dundee look. You missed out on the earthquake in California. Yeah, apparently two people died, a 6.4 in Humboldt. So, yeah, in 1980, when my father was on trial with the Seventh-day Adventist Church, a leading member of the church that, that came to our cabin at this uh, Glacier View retreat in near Denver, Colorado, and uh, he was, like, so emotionally moved by all the drama regarding my father, he said to me that if I ever wanted to go to medical school, he'd pay for it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I never had any inclination or talent in that direction. I have never really had any athletic talent. You know, I've never been much above average. I mean, I had endurance. I forced myself to finish five marathons, but there's nothing special about my times. Perhaps the closest I came to you know, a modicum of athletic talent was at uh, age 19. I could I could give a good game to a member of uh, uh, the Nevada Union High School tennis team. So, I mean, he played tennis at a really high level, and I was kind of surprised to find myself, you know, had the ability to kind of play up to the level he was at. So, that was, that was about uh, the highest athletic achievement I've ever had. Which highlighted the avant-garde video diary she shot in lockdown. Current views, 8100, and the Joanna Newsom cover she recorded to benefit refugees. In April, the Northman flopped, but never mind. In July, Doa signed a modeling contract with Miu Miu. This is the Nebo Baby's credo. Try, and if at first you don't succeed, remember you're still a celebrity's child. So try, try again. No one exemplifies this maxim better than Brooklyn Beckham. In the words of The Guardian's Marina Hyde, a celebrity scion incapable of having what other mortals might regard as amateur hobbies without considering them nascent professional empires. At 23, Beckham has already cycled through aborted attempts to follow in his parents' footsteps in the worlds of football and modeling. He next tried to become a professional photographer, releasing a coffee table book full of out-of-focus pictures of elephants. So what's going on in the United States? Uh, following the news, I saw that Ukraine's leader Zelensky spoke to Congress. So is the, is the support for Ukraine just as strong and popular as ever? I mean, if Russia gets its act together and absolutely crushes Ukraine, I assume that would be devastating for the Biden administration and its prestige. But uh, on the other hand, I'd have to think that a lot of Europeans and, and Americans are getting sick of one, the dangers of nuclear war that we're escalating by subsidizing Ukraine, and two, you know, much higher energy prices that uh, we're having to pay due to this war. So I think that uh, there'd have to be some kind of growing pushback to our subsidizing Ukraine's battle with, with Russia. 
and uh, the January 6th committee report came out today. I can't say I've paid much mind. I'd be curious to see if Kevin McCarthy gets up as House Majority Leader, Speaker of the House. Average behavioral patterns, IQ, temper of any given group, heavily affects society. Yeah, absolutely. So society and cultures and religions are primarily the results of genetics combined with a particular environment. Danny was a chef, a career he embarked upon despite possessing a level of culinary talent most commonly seen in... Nepotism is healthy in keeping your lands homogeneous. Yeah, I'm sure there are many advantages to nepotism. And uh, there are many advantages to, you know, elements of meritocracy as well. They are not exclusive. Uh, it's not like one or the other. Uh, both have a significant role to play. So in the Jewish tradition, all right, meritocracy does not allow you to have a priestly status, right? Priestly status is only handed on by your father, right? It's uh, carried on by the father, it's not carried on by the mother. So if your father was a Kohen, you're a Kohen. You can't buy your way into Kohen status. In BuzzFeed videos. While these endeavors have not been successful in the traditional sense, they have enabled him to amass 14.6 million followers on Instagram, where the only important metric is the one thing an Apple baby is assured of on the basis of their name, attention. Yeah, but how many of those 14.6 million followers on Instagram are born? It may very well be that 14 million of those followers are born. You can buy followers on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Zero hedge. Maybe airline may travel costly. Climate change lockdowns. Yeah, thanks for Art Bell keeping me up to date on the edgy news. We have all heard the anti anti nepotism argument. France has decided to completely ban certain short haul flights in an attempt to reduce well, carbon emissions. Yeah, and Australia is you know, subsidizing more and more uh, green energy attempts, uh, very expensive, right? and this is coming from the Conservative ruling party in New South Wales. Yeah, I went swimming yesterday, so I've been swimming twice. Uh, there are sharks around, but uh, you go about go out to sea there's there's a sandbank so uh, you don't get big waves here in Tenham and I think just out to sea a little further you get the beginnings of the Great Barrier Reef but there's never been a shark attack here in Tenham Sands oh it smells great and the eucalyptus in summer I just love the smell of eucalypti in summer mate I lived here for a year and then, aside from that, I spent about uh, six months of my life here. First came here in 1982, then came for a year in 1984-85, came back for four months in 89-90, and then a few weeks here, a few weeks there in 2000, 2014, 2021. Sure, children of the famous may have an advantage at the beginning, but eventually talent will win out. Well, that's true, mate. That's true. Those who can't hack it will fade away, while the truly gifted nobodies will be discovered if they only keep at it. This is ludicrous, Fran Lebowitz wrote in a 1997 issue of Vanity Fair. Getting in the door is pretty much the entire game, especially in movie acting, which is, after all, hardly a profession notable for its rigor. Yeah, but if you can't produce results, right, you can't you know, make someone feel something. Uh, you're not going to have much of a career as a movie actor, you know, even if your dad's Steven Spielberg. Leibowitz brought this up in service of a metaphor about structural racism. Just as the children of celebrities got a leg up from the fact that they physically resembled people who were already famous, so too did America's whites benefit from fitting the nation's mental image of who should be in charge. In this context, being a Nepo baby is the Cadillac of privilege. Look, we prefer people who look like us, sound like us, have our values, right? Have our standards of right and wrong, 
right, with whom we feel comfortable, right? People prefer people like themselves genetically, culturally, religiously, racially, ethnically. Nobody's got it better. Those in a position to know often agree with Lee Boyd's assessment. They don't realize how lucky they are because this is their world, says one talent manager who has worked with me. None of us realize how lucky we are. And how lucky are we that we uh, have functioning arms and legs and eyes and ears. Right? To, to be indifferent to our privileges right, is to be human. Multiple celebrity offspring. I am very transparent with my clients that there are steps they need to take to be able to be relevant past the 15 second mark. It's not just about your clout. Where is your resume? A lot of them are working toward their own thing, but at times they're trying to bypass the steps a person coming from nowhere would have to do. Having been spared the seasoning of everyday hardship, a Nepo baby can often seem guppyish, unformed. Pauline Kale once wrote of Peter Fonda, he doesn't have a core of tension. Something in him is still asleep. And yeah, and uh, the self-made can get on your nerves because they have to continually remind you that they are self-made. No one handed them anything on a silver platter. They work for everything they got. All right, they tend frequently to be graceless, to be stingy, to be self-centered. Right? It's not like uh, a life of privilege or you know, a life of being self-made uh, just inherently makes people pleasant to be around. Yeah, Fonda isn't self-made. Apps always will be. It's no surprise so many Nepo babies get their start as models, the manager says. The child doesn't have to open their mouth. I've learned that once they start speaking, the public doesn't go along for the ride. So I remember when I recovered from six years of chronic fatigue syndrome, I had a girlfriend who had worked at the Ford modeling agency and she said, oh, you need to get into modeling. So I moved to LA, took a bunch of shots, went on a bunch of photo auditions, got an agent, you know, had some callbacks, but uh, never had any success as a male model or as an actor. They say, the more they talk, the more unrelatable they become. The most self-aware among them have the savviness to play against type, but that creates its own problems. On Instagram, a lot of them are not necessarily showcasing their life as a socialite. They're like, oh my god, look at me at this dive bar. Girl, where are you? Oh no, you've seen the lost Luke Ford acting reels. <laughs> I didn't display much talent. I remember in acting class, people would tell me that no matter the role, I always would play it like a serial killer. This is before I had the Alexander technique, before I had my voice lessons. Ah, I was singing the other day at the garden center. I was singing as I worked, and uh, my family's used to me having a terrible singing voice, but I've been taking voice lessons. Why isn't it both your father's and mother's blood taken into account? Wouldn't time and travel cause your blood to be miscegenated out of existence if just the father's blood is taken into consideration? It's just the law, the custom that uh, it's, it's easier to know. Well, I'm sure there's many explanations for the, the priestly status and why it just comes from the fathers, but that's just how it is. So I think there are advantages to like aristocratic genetic lineage. You know, there, there's a time and a role for that, that there, there, there are roles in a tribe that uh, you can't buy your way into, or you can't work your way into. Right? There's advantages to an aristocratic way of dealing things, as well as advantages to meritocratic, and you don't have to be exclusive. There's, there's place for both. Just on a yacht last night, within the industry. Oh, anyway, so I was singing, and uh, there was a 15-year-old you know, girl there. I said, oh, do I have a nice singing voice? And she said, yes. Maybe she didn't want to uh, ruffle the feathers of the boss's brother. Maybe she just really appreciated my singing. Anyway, I've been, I've, I've had voice lessons. I've been doing these voice exercises. Maybe I've uh, rediscovered, rediscovered something. Maybe she's just being polite. Yeah, girls tend to be nice. Yeah, uh, the 
the Kohain, the priestly lineage, is patrilineal. While to be a Jew in Orthodox Judaism, it uh, only comes from the mother. So in, in the traditional Jewish understanding, someone born of a Jewish father and a non-Jewish mother is not Jewish. And they're not a Kohain. Someone born of a Jewish mother and a non-Jewish father is Jewish. So this was switched about 2,000 years ago when a lot of Jewish women were getting raped. So 2,500 years ago, 3,000 years ago, uh, you were considered Jewish if you simply had a Jewish father. But the rabbis changed things around 2,000 years ago when a lot of Jewish women were getting raped. And they changed from patrilineal to matrilineal descent. And there is little use in being subtle about the familial strings. So Israel now has a new right-wing Benjamin Netanyahu-led coalition and uh, they're considering making changes to who is a Jew, making it more restrictive. So currently I think anyone with either a Jewish mother or a Jewish father or even a reform or reconstructionist conversion can move. France has decided to completely end short-haul flights to reduce, I assume, carbon emissions. Someone once said to me, we should hire so-and-so because their parents will come to the opening night. So I noticed that uh, the rich are increasingly giving up owning their own private planes because it's reasonably easy to track what uh, private planes are doing. So now it seems like the, the new thing for the rich to do is simply to rent planes to preserve some privacy. Says a veteran casting director. The need to maintain relationships can ease a famous child's path through the door. A big agency will write and say, this is so-and-so's kid, and you understand that to mean, so you have to see this kid. If the Nepo baby is obviously untalented, it usually ends there. I have learned to... I think it'd be fun to be a volunteer firefighter. Like if I had the time, I think a volunteer firefighter would be awesome. Like you would bond with other people, so it's you know, one of the best cures for loneliness is to volunteer. You know, as long as the, the person who's instructing you isn't a jerk, I think being a volunteer firefighter would be pretty awesome. Simply say, not right for the role, but lovely. There are a number of veiled responses rather than saying, are you guys kidding me? The casting director puts it one way. A lot of the children of famous people are not good. How often are they meeting with them? God, there have been so many over the course of my life. They once met with an aspiring actress who was the daughter of two movie stars. There was something else that walked in the room with her, they say. Like, my parents are famous, and I'm here because somebody told me to meet you. A lovely person, but definitely a sense of entitlement. She laughed and I... Well, we all have a sense of entitlement. It just comes out in different situations. And sense of entitlement is not something you need to uh, nepo babies. I was like, that person doesn't excite me. The struggle isn't there. You don't think after I was named Hustler Magazine's Asshole of the Month for its uh, Christmas uh, 2000 or was it 1999 issue that I developed a sense of entitlement from that? This is not always a deal breaker. Afterward, the daughter booked the role that made her a household. Yeah, a lot of people are out here digging for clams. I'm not into like that kind of annual labor. I'm not into fishing and hunting. I'm more cerebral. I like the life of the mind. Long lonely walks on the beach with my phones, talking to my loyal seven viewers. Despite suspicions, you don't always know someone's background. A while back, a young actress with a famous family but a common last name came in to read for her first lead role. I had no idea who she was, says the casting director. I don't know why I didn't get the memo. From my vantage point, she won that job fair and square. The actress's performance was... Yeah, it's going to be a little tough going back to Los Angeles and uh, the much lower quality of life. Uh, dramatically higher rates of crime, you know, probably 20 times the crime rate of Tenet Sands. Uh, the social dislocation, the homelessness, the, the graffiti, the antisocial behavior, the, you know, the rampant dysfunction, the uh, 
their antagonisms between people, the, the culture wars, the, the suspicion, the incoherent society, the dislocation. The, yeah, it might be might be a little bit of an adjustment. I'll take refuge in the bosom of the Orthodox Jewish community, where things are relatively coherent and cohesive. Widely acclaimed, and she became a major star. The casting director laments changes in the industry that have perhaps enabled the Nebo Baby's rise. I don't think people know or understand what acting is anymore. What's in the bag? So I've got my DJI Pocket 2 with its clip-on portable mic and power cords, extra power source. Uh, got wipes for my, I got my sunnies, my sunglasses in there, wipes for my my glasses and for my uh, phone covers and uh, that's about it. What about meeting that Aussie Jewish, oh yeah, 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 that Aussie Jewish girl who interviewed me, uh, Della, something like that. I hadn't thought about that. They say, with the advent of streaming and social media, the big screen no longer rules. Yeah, there are a lot of people I'm acquainted with who I just haven't looked up, haven't felt that inspired to want to meet, but uh, I should probably make a little bit more of an effort. A lot of these people watch this crap, and they think that what they're watching is good acting. I, I like connecting with people, meeting up with people. I also enjoy a lot of time on my own. I also enjoy a lot of time on my own uh, live streaming or blogging or journaling, or reading. They mimic what that is, the casting director says. And it's not good. That devolution explains why it may feel as though there are so many more well-born mediocrities than ever before. The medium standards are merely lower. There have always been tons of well-born mediocrities. And during the days of royalty and aristocracy, there were tons of them. We need not sign on to the fiction that Nepo babies actually have it worse to acknowledge that there are elements of their lives we wouldn't trade for our own. Nobody treats you seriously, filmmaker Owen Klein, son of Kevin Klein and Phoebe Cates, told The Guardian. Nothing like collecting smooth colored glass on uh, shorelines under an apricot sky. September. No one wants to read someone's kids thing. Others taking you seriously doesn't necessarily cure the anxiety. For a long time, I wondered whether my career had come to me because of my own talents or because of some kind of genteel nepotism. A 30-something Jeff Bridges told the authors of Hollywood Dynasties. The guilt caused big problems for me. The casting Is this period of my life one of the most enjoyable? Yes, but it's a very gentle form of joy. Like, as opposed to the periods of my life where I was having, you know, a lot of success and uh, fame and uh, making money or, you know, going to a different party every night. Uh, so, this is a gentle, laid-back kind of joy. But I also enjoy being right in the middle of things where every night I'm going to some rider gathering. Uh, book readings, Los Angeles Press Club events, uh, going to debates, lectures. I mean, that's also available in Los Angeles and I love it too. So I don't think I could live here. Actor can empathize. How do you know if somebody really likes you? Some Nepo babies take this vulnerability and use it. The struggle is the spice that finally makes them interesting. And others, it's the thing that gets in their way. The industry's original Nepo baby was Douglas Fairbanks Jr., son of Douglas Sr., and stepson of Mary Pickford, who in the 1920s were arguably the most famous people on the planet. Sensing the power of a good name, Paramount's Jesse L. Lasky handed the 13-year-old a $1,000 a week contract and set about trying to make him a star. Like many who followed in his footsteps, Fairbanks Jr. The bridges of San, is it the streets of San Francisco? Oh yeah, Michael Douglas starred in that. So uh, watching TV was kind of frowned upon in my Seventh Day Adventist upbringing. But when the parents were away, I was over at a friend's house. It often thrilled to watching the streets of San Francisco 
I'll keeping an, an eye on uh, <laughs> on the, the parking lot for when the, the parents drive up. Muir never came close to equaling his father's legacy, but he had a long career, was briefly married to Joan Crawford, and seemed entirely at ease with his station in life. I have, since maturity, known full well the limits of my capabilities. So, in The Fablemans, you've got the movie director John Ford who says that uh, when the horizon is at the top of the screen, like right now, that that's interesting framing. And when the horizon's at the bottom of the screen, like right now, that's also interesting framing. But when the horizon's in the middle of the screen, like now, so that's boring framing. He wrote in his memoir, the younger Fairbanks, who was mobbed by adoring throngs upon his arrival in Los Angeles, likely escaped the backlash that hits today's Nepo babies. Though presumably there were a few bitchy telegrams sent about him. Those who came after were often treated as tragic figures. Take Frank Sinatra Jr. While Frank hung out with criminals in a cool way, Junior did it in an extremely uncool way. He got kidnapped. That reminds me of Ernest Hemingway and uh, Paul Johnson's remark about Hemingway, that for Hemingway there was a moral way to drink and an immoral way to drink, a moral way to have adultery, an immoral way to have adultery. But, uh, there was a moral way to kill and an immoral way to kill, that there was a, a moral way to walk down the street in an immoral way. But, uh, Hemingway had a sort of aesthetic sense of morality. It wasn't until the late 60s when second-gen stars like Liza Minnelli and Jane Fonda came onto the scene. Liza Minnelli was so nice, so I was working as a Hasidic extra. So I had, I had payers, you know, the side locks, uh, dressed up as a Hasidic Jew uh, for a Liza Minnelli movie. And it was, I think, 1995. And during downtime on the movie, Liza Minnelli and I would just sit on the sidewalk, you know, with our, with our feet on the street and sit on the, on the edge of the sidewalk there and just chat and laugh. She was so fun. And uh, lovely lady. I must have reminded her of Peter Allen. And then when I went to an event at the Sephardic Temple in Westwood that night, I, I kept on my payers just for a laugh, and people said, oh, you've become really religious. The, the first celebrity kids were able to climb out of Hollywood's primordial soup and carve identities apart from their lineage. Each was aided by a natural divide separating them from their famous parent, Fonda, by working in Europe. So how much time do you need alone each day? So I remember telling my therapist that uh, I made sure to go to Minion every morning so that I got some social time. He said, uh, an hour a day, that's not enough. Normal people spend, you know, six, eight, ten hours a day around other people. So I'm usually happier when I push myself to spend more time around other people than comes naturally. But I certainly like, certainly like, say, three hours alone a day. Probably that, that's optimal, three or four. Unless I'm engaged in, say, a particularly important writing project, then, then maybe five or six. An ocean away from America, Minnelli, by the somewhat more dramatic distance between the living and the dead. Long before TikTok got a hold of these descendants, scholars have been studying our obsession with multi-generational stars. Austrian academic... It's just uh, a continuance of our obsession with multi-generational royalty, right? Royalty, almost by definition, is multi-generational. I'm always with the little yellow man in my head. Yeah, I like time alone, but my mind's a dangerous neighborhood that I shouldn't enter alone. So in the morning, I'm usually energized and optimistic, but at night, I gotta leave that audible book running I don't particularly want to be alone with my thoughts, but uh, where did I see good art? Ah, Washington Post today. I uh, had some tips on how to be at ease uh, with yourself, with your own thoughts, and so it suggested writing down topics that you'd like to muse on so that you can make them, say, positive or uplifting. You can think about you know, things you want to do on vacation or books you want to read or books you want to write. 
Uh, but I like that idea, you need to make notes, things to muse on, because I don't know about you, if I just allow my mind to wander, uh, not, it does tend to calm you down, like solitude and just letting your mind wander, it, it calms you down, but I, I like a little more direction, so I like that idea of making notes on, on topics to to think uh, upon when you're all alone. Like Eva Maria Shorgan Huber argues that celebrity children function as living links to a shared pop culture history, connecting us to a nostalgic vision of the past. You can see this keenly in the types of Nebo babies the culture does not have a problem with. Stars like Minnelli, Mariska Hargitay, or Freddie Prince Jr., who all had a parent die in tragic circumstances, garner respect, not scorn, for following in their footsteps. The same way the Kennedys went from nouveau riche bootleggers to inhabitants of a... So I didn't bring my CPAP with me up to Tenham Sands. I left it behind in Sydney. It's a bit of a hassle to drag it around, so I'm not getting the same quality sleep that I had in Sydney. And uh, in a tropical environment, I'm uh, usually enjoying a nap after lunch every day. It's not a long one, only about 20-30 minutes. Fairy tale castle. So does the passage of time transform a Nepo baby into someone from a famous family. Few today care that Michael Douglas, Laura Dern, or Tracy Ellis Ross had celebrity parents. The same principle holds true for someone like Dakota Johnson, who reps multiple generations of Hollywood legends and is thus exempt from the tasteless striving that defines celebrity children of a more recent vintage. Paradoxically, the Nepo babies we like best are often the ones who are most privileged. Well, people are at ease with who they are. Uh, people who like themselves, they're a lot easier to like. The director, Luca Guadagnino, who cast Johnson in two of his films, once told me, I can see Tippi Hedren in her. He glimpsed flickers of her grandmother, the great Hitchcock blonde. We often talk about the it factor, the otherworldly charisma that stars like Clara Bow exhibited in front of a camera. As the career of Chet Hanks makes abundantly clear, this quality is not guaranteed to be passed down through the generations. But it can be off-putting to discover that it may indeed be hereditary. To see a Zoe Kravitz or Kate Hudson display that same intangible sparkle you saw in their parents. They walk in the room and they have this thing says the casting director. They just know. They literally know. You're drawn to that. And you're a little bit afraid of it. Because it's bigger than you. Yeah. So, guess what? Talents, abilities are going to be largely genetic. <laughs> Much of who we are is uh, kind of cast in the genes. We're not born with a blank slate. Okay, that's it. i got to go get ready for Shabbat. Bye-bye.